EPAWA Weather Consulting headquartered in Worth Whitehall, Pennsylvania. This is Weather Weeklies, an informative video of the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the EPAWA coverage area. The thoughts and opinions expressed in this video are those of the forecaster alone and may not reflect those of the staff of EPAWA Weather Consulting LLC as a whole, nor its constituents. Now, without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Martrich with Weather Weeklies. Good Sunday morning to another edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, February 11th. Uh, we're going to be discussing today the long-range pattern, but like we normally do, but we're also going to address the short-term threat that we will have a map call out for today. Uh, starting off with the long-range table like we normally do, again, uh, Groundhog said we're going to have an early spring. We continue to say there's not going to be an early spring. We're going to be heading into, after this mild period is over, once we get to the middle of the month, which has always been the target period, colder than average temperatures relative to average, and that's going to go for an extended period. It's going to have some ebbs and flows in there, but for the most part, that entire period is looking at uh, at least slightly below average during that stretch. So we are going to have favorable temperatures at least to support some snow. It does not mean guarantee of snow, but there are opportunities here beyond this system just in the week ahead by itself and then there's some additional ones toward the end of the month we have a winter storm signal listed after the 25th but there are some a couple snow events possible in between there okay so there's uh, a more active pattern here with more uh temperatures a little bit closer or more conducive for snowfall at that point uh, than we will be for this first storm which was not uh supposed to be something that's going to produce an all-snow event uh, for, for much of the area, and uh, that's exactly what's going to end up happening. Uh, so here's where we're at in, in average snowfall year-to-date. Uh, actually, this is the average snowfall for February and March. You can see this is our snowiest month, as indicated here in the left side of the chart, and then we cut those numbers about in half by the time we go into March uh, as far as what climatological averages are uh, for those periods or for, for, for these areas. Uh, but year-to-date snowfall, we are behind and now getting even further behind. We have had no snowfall uh, since the last time we talked on February 4th, and that's because we were in that expected milder pattern. We will This will be changing for a few of these areas, a few of them, not all of them. A few of these areas will be changing. We'll be going up a little bit and adding to this in this next event, okay? And that is coming in Monday night and Tuesday. So let's take a look at that system, starting off this video with that system. And what this is, is a Miller B system, okay? So it's a uh, primary low going through uh, the Mississ lower Mississippi Valley, Tennessee Valley, and ending up near West Virginia. It's going to run into this confluence that's off to the north here. This confluence will not, it's almost like a pseudo block in a sense that it's going to make it redevelop. It can't run through that confluence, so it tries to redevelop toward the coast. OK, and that's indicated by the red L, the transfer from one to the other. And uh, then you have this one taking over as the new primary right here. And when it does so, it's going to draw in cold air around the back side of this as this continues to strengthen and pulls off to the north and east. That's the idea of this dynamic cooling process. We are going to see that but many areas are, in fact, going to start off as rain. Unless you are up by the New York, Pennsylvania border, then you might have a brief mix going over to snow very quickly. This is all going to take place. Um, uh, for most areas uh, in the southern areas where it starts as rain, it'll actually be during the evening on on uh, mid to late evening, but evening nevertheless on, on Monday. And then uh, once it gets up, get past midnight up in far northern areas, it might start off as a brief mix going over to snow quickly. And here's what the European model has this in a loop form just to show you where it's going. Here's the low here and it transfers and that one takes over. You get a rain to snow situation where it, it pulls in cold air along the backside. This is a dynamic system. And that's and this is in the absence of a strong high off to the north because we are still in this period slightly above average. If you look back at the long range chart, uh, this is its for, look at this. So we're, we're we're near to slightly above average in this period. So it's not the pattern change yet. This is a pre-pattern change system. Okay, here's what the NAM high res future simulated radar has, and it has again. It starts as rain in the southern half. Look at the northern half here, and then it starts pulling cold air in, and this changes over. But when it changes over, snow falling and snow sticking are two different things. You're going to have a wet ground prior. It's going to take some time for that to start to stick. It's uh, going to be marginal marginal temperatures, maybe just above freezing initially on Tuesday morning when this is changing over. So it might not stick unless you get some heavier rates, and I don't know you're going to get those heavy rates. It might just be lighter here in the morning. 
So you're not going to have these accumulations that far south like uh, some of these winter storm watches that went up yesterday. Uh, again, I, I understand the criteria has changed for that. It seemed like they did it a little bit too early and too aggressive with those winter storm watches. Uh, for example, uh, the Lehigh Valley where I live, they're on our winter storm watch for four to eight inches. That's not happening. That's not happening. Uh, that's going to be way too high. So again, there's no prize for being first, right? But we're going to we we always had targeted Sunday 3 p.m. To have the first coal map out. We will have that out this afternoon, okay? And if there's any adjustments we have to make, we'll do that on Monday before the system starts. That's our normal schedule. So I don't know what the rush was here to move these, uh, uh, you know, across the board with putting snow maps out this early. Uh, but we weren't doing any knee-jerk reactions based on what anybody else is doing, and we're just waiting, and it's going to be good because now we don't have to go from here where everybody was expecting, oh, wow, we're getting a lot of snow. And then they're like, wait a minute, well, you cut the totals in half. That's going to happen today, and there's going to be a lot of disappointed people because of that. But I warned you about this. I knew it was coming, and uh, here we are. It's coming. So here's what the European model has for snowfall. Uh, not, it's a lot different from, uh, and this is pretty much shared opinion across the board with uh, different model guidance. Your heaviest axis, again, has always been north of 78. is up here by I-80, actually, in the higher elevations especially of where the heaviest snow is going to be. It's going to be right in those areas, okay? Uh, farther south, you're going to get a changeover, but it's going to be kind of late on Tuesday morning, and you're not going to have a whole lot left here at that point. So when you get to I-78, this has always been advertised, always been advertised as an I-78 and North Deal in both Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And guess what? That's where the best snow is. It's not to say you can't get snow further south, and I mentioned that in the daily forecast videos this week, but don't expect a whole lot south of 78. Not a whole lot, okay? Uh, and I think that's what we're, our realistic map that we're going to put out today. It might disappoint, but, but disappoint a few snow lovers. If you're disappointed uh, and your expectations were set high by someone else, don't come to me about that. I don't want to hear it, okay? Uh, furthermore, uh, we're looking at this as a Kushera map, which is actually accounting for ratios and things like that, which are going to be quite low for this event to begin with because it's a heavy, wet, pasty snow. But what falls, this is showing what's going to fall. I have no doubt this falls from the sky, but this is what it's saying is going to stick. This is snow depth, and it's not quite as high. All right, again, I-78 and north, okay? I-78 through I-80 and north of I-80, that is where your chances of snow are going to be. The higher elevations are going to do better with this because they're going to be changing over faster. The temperatures come down a lot quicker, and that's what you get. So as far as the storm is uh, concerned, it's always been advertised as an I-78 North deal from us. It is, it is advertised as a pre-pattern change storm that was going to be marginal and a thread the needle opportunity for areas receiving snow. That has been the messaging all week, okay? If you have a different expectation, you're coming to me on social media telling me different. That's a you problem, not a me problem, okay? That's a lack of, of listening comprehension or in some cases reading comprehension. That's not all me, Okay. Uh, if you heard something somewhere else, maybe you forgot about where you heard it. Somebody's hyping the living you-know-what out of this uh, to be something that it's not, okay? And I, the messaging has always been, let's be cautious with this one because this is pre-pattern change. This isn't when the air is solidly in place prior to the storm coming. It's going to be some overrunning, and it's going to take uh, some dynamic cooling process to get the snow we're going to get. And the best chance of that, we're going to be north, okay? So that's the first thing. Second thing is the pattern change. Uh, the pattern is changing, and it's always been targeted for the middle of the month, okay? Uh, so it's coming on time. There is no uh, no way you could have confused this messaging from us if you follow these videos religiously. Yet I'm still getting people that do admit they watch the videos every single week, and they're not getting it, okay? This is never messaged as a brutally cold pattern coming that's going to last for a month or a month and a half. At no point, okay? And if that was your fantasy misinterpretation it's again another you problem not a me problem because that is not what this was messaged as was it was it messaged as a very favorable pattern coming up yes and it is uh, i keep getting the uh, we're, we're kicking the can down the road comments we're not kicking the can down the road uh, it's always been targeted as mid-march and if you look back before i go to the mjo we looked at this how many times i'll be showing you this image about how we're in uh, december it was not a great pattern and we were talking about this in november and december not a great pattern uh, for those two months, November or December. So we knew it wasn't going to start off early. This is going to follow the normal or, or prototypical El Nino paradigm for winter, which means when you get to January, yeah, you get some snow threats here. And we did. We had a few. But overall, it's really not the greatest pattern yet until you get to to uh, February. February turns a lot better. You get some blocking involved here. You get cold and, and a stormy pattern underneath the block. We are going to have that. It's just not didn't start at the first of the month. We knew that. We was going to be the middle of the month. That was a target time. 
And that was part in part because of uh, the, the MJO progression, which was stuck in phase seven for a while with that Omega blocking pattern we had earlier on in the month. And now we are kind of teetering between phase seven and phase eight. In fact, we are in phase eight this morning. It's going to be there for a couple days this week and then go into the circle of death, which is fine. Uh, where the phase where it comes from is important because you know you'll get lingering effects of phase eight into the circle of death. Even though it's kind of just sitting and meandering in the circle for a while, and that's on both the GEFS, uh, the GEFS extended on the left, and this is the European Ensemble extended on the right. It just kind of sits there in the null phase in the middle uh, in the circle of death, which means it doesn't really have an effect on the pattern at that point. What will have an effect on the pattern is blocking. Okay, uh, and blocking is not here for this storm. If I go back to, uh, oops, I can't stop it. I don't know. Sometimes I stop this and I don't, but it, and it stops and, it, and other times it doesn't. For this storm we have right now, we don't have any blocking in place. This is going to start the loop here. See, this, it's a positive NAO. This is where the storm is coming through uh, early this week. But after that, after it exits, then you get blocking established over Greenland. And then you have additional storm signals coming in here. Uh, those couple storms I mentioned, especially around... Uh, you know, maybe next weekend, next Saturday-ish, and then maybe the following couple days after that, there's a couple signals in there that were previous storm signals that we had in our long-range outlook and are now moved to a different category, to actual storms. So we have the 16th, 17th is one of them. That's probably the 17th next Saturday, right? Uh, or is that next Saturday? Yeah, it is next Saturday. Okay, so, and then a couple days behind that, 21st and 23rd, I listed rain and snow on there because, you know, uh, it, it's it's during a time where temperatures are kind of near average at that point for a couple days. But overall, this pattern going forward is slightly below average at least. It's not epic cold, okay? And it, you got to remember the temperatures are actually going up in terms of averages over time. So this is all relative to that. Uh, but you can still get snow, obviously, if we're getting snow in a situation where we are still slightly above average Monday night into Tuesday or still slightly above average temperature, or at least near average, and you can still get snow in that scenario. Maybe not down uh, I-95 because we don't have that kind of storm. But going forward, if you're slightly below average, you can get it down to I-95, and I do think we're going to have some opportunities uh, going forward. But opportunities are not necessarily guarantees for snow, and that has always been the messaging also um, so we knew this was going to be a back-weighted thing. We'd have an opportunity later, even in the best pattern. This is a good setup coming up here uh, with this setup going forward. This is taking that a step further. And you see the blocking that's going to keep remaining in place well beyond as you get the blocking up in here, uh, continuing with all those colder uh, temperatures settling underneath that block. And that's going to go for a long time. This is going. To, this is using the European extended and going out a ways here. We have... Uh, slightly below average dominating periods going all the way through March. And this goes past, here's the equinox right there. And it keeps going and going and going. So there's the opportunity this can last for the most of the month of March. And that's why we have slightly below average temperatures in the month of March as a whole. I do think we are colder relative to average. Is it going to be good enough in the second half of March to get snowstorms, I-95 and Southeast? It's going to take a lot, take a little more work to get that at that point. And I understand time's limited, but... Uh, there are opportunities up until that point, and there are some things, there are some things that can help uh, with that a little bit. And that is going to be sudden stratospheric warming. That's one of them, which may or may not result in a total wind reversal at uh, the 10 HPA level, okay, 10 millibars. This is uh, some warming over the poles here that can get cold underneath that, uh, you know, if this can, this can uh, at least weaken. We don't need it to, to have a total zonal wind reversal at that level in order to have stratospheric effects uh, on the troposphere where we live and where we have weather, basically. So this could actually help extend it longer into March and not just be like the first week or two and that's it. And then the equinox hits, you get you hit spring. So unfortunately, for those of you asking me about uh, is spring going to start on time this year? I don't think it does, at least not the 19th. It might be maybe April starts off a little warmer. We'll see. I'm hoping because I really don't want this lingering forever. But there are storm signals later this month. Here's our first storm, right? Uh, after that, there are some signals after that point. Here's the European model uh, that ran last night. A little snow shower activity maybe on Thursday night. Not a big deal. Then we have a couple signals coming in here. There's one there. And it, you know, don't worry about placement of what it's showing verbatim, but there's another one here comes in a few days behind that. There are systems there that we've identified before these models even took shape and were showing anything, okay? There are signals that there are some opportunities, at least, for some wintry weather for more areas within our coverage region. This first one was not really four areas farther south and never was. And if you look at terms of winter storm signals in the longer range, now this is using Lehigh Valley International Airport, but... 
you can see there's plenty of opportunities going forward where we have additional snowfall possible through, and this goes all the way through, I believe, uh, looks like March 26th, okay? So now on March 26th, at, I mean, it's 100 different ensemble members that run, and they are all showing uh, pretty decent snowfall during that time frame. And as a matter of fact, it has the mean over 20 inches in that time span. So, uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this works out. It might not work out like this, and it's a possible that it doesn't. But at least you're giving yourself a fighting chance because we have a very favorable upper air pattern developing here. This is the European Extended. Look at this. Look how long the blocking just sticks around and sticks around. And that cold and stormy pattern undercuts that block going right into March. It's there. It's a chance that it's going to produce. It doesn't mean it's a guarantee. Um, you know, I know a lot of people guaranteed or led you to believe that this is going to be just like February 2010 all over again. If February 2010 was epic in our region epic all right and some areas got 40 to 40 plus inches of snow in that month it was pretty you know, a pretty badass month okay uh is it going to be like that i don't know that okay uh, is there a possibility yeah but i mean i i, I don't want to commit to something like that necessarily well we have opportunities uh certainly okay there there could be um you know you could have a, a big snowstorm in there you could have None at all. You could have two, three, whatever. Um, but that's going to be continue to be our messaging. Okay, the potential's there. It doesn't mean it's going to definitely 100% produce. And again, if you thought differently or misled somewhere else into believing that, then again, that's kind of on you, not me. Okay, so I want to make clear what that messaging is because this is very important. Uh, just because you have a block in place, usually it results in something like this. It doesn't mean that it's going to be doing that all the time. Okay. It uh, doesn't mean the entire month from February 15th through beyond March 15th is going to be epic cold and snow. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means that there's a, uh, a from a probability standpoint, which all that weather is, you have a better chance than not to see at least some accumulating snow. So uh, to summarize, colder than average temperatures are likely to become more common in the second half of February, and that's onward. Snow chances increase after the second week of February and continue through at least early March. That might be extended longer again, but then you start running into a marginal temperature situation, sun angle, that kind of thing when you go deeper into March. So it's a little tougher. Uh, winter storm signals may be multiple in that time frame up until then and watching stratospheric changes that could extend winter-like temperatures into early spring when we nobody wants it, of course. You want it to be, you know, 60s, 50s, 60s, that kind of thing in April and uh, you might uh, be pushing that back a little bit. Uh, we'll see. Ho hopefully not. Uh, I, I'm one that uh, when spring starts, I want it to be actual spring, but we can't do anything about that, of course. And we'll continue to follow that here in the next couple of weeks. And uh, once the last chance of snow is gone and beyond us, and I know that it's going to be sometime uh, maybe mid-March, these weather weekly videos are going to go for at least another month yet, I think. Um, before we, we don't have any more wintry threats. After that, then we'll we'll stop it and just handle it on a short-term basis like normal. But uh, these will continue for a couple more weeks, so I hope you join us again next week, and uh, maybe we'll be talking about additional storms that are in the vicinity at that time. Take care.